Hey everyone, it's Emily from Twingate. If your home lab keeps growing, but your hardware budget doesn't, you're gonna hit a wall pretty quick. One server per project is a great place to start when you're just getting into home labbing, but it doesn't really scale. And that is where Proxmox comes in, which is also the topic of today's video. Proxmox is an open source virtualization management platform. And all that really means is that you as a user, or me in the case of this video, can create and manage virtual machines and Linux containers from a single web interface. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to deploy Proxmox VE. Ooh. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to run multiple services on a single machine without the headaches of a traditional raw KVM setup. You can 100% get a ton of really cool, useful hardware at a fraction of the cost. The secondhand market is fantastic. And there are a ton of really cool YouTube channels that take you through how to refurbish old hardware and all that good stuff. But you shouldn't have to buy new hardware every time you want to deploy a new service. And you definitely don't want to let the existing RAM and CPU just sitting on your existing machines unused to continue to sit there idle. Now for a lot of people, especially if you're newer to home labbing, virtualization can kind of feel like overkill for your home lab environment. And honestly, I get it, Linux's KVM hypervisor is a little bit clunky if you're just getting started. And it's this problem that Proxmox really shines around because it fixes this. It's essentially KVM and Linux containers wrapped in a web UI that makes sense and is easy to use. If you really want manual control, you can 100% do that with Proxmox, which is also really cool. But if you want something that's a little bit easier, quicker, faster, they have a fantastic helper script ecosystem that makes spinning up Proxmox and any new services that you wanna run in your Proxmox virtual environment super, super, super easy. Okay, so here is what you will actually need to get started. We're working on a home lab, so obviously you're gonna need some hardware. Any hardware should do, but I would recommend something that has a high core count and a decent amount of RAM because we wanna be able to spread this across multiple virtual machines. So if you have like a mini PC or a server, that's ideal. Next, you'll need the Proxmox VE ISO installer, which I will have a link to down below. Then we'll need some way to flash an SD card or a thumb drive. I'm gonna be using Etcher, but there's lots of options out here. So just pick your poison. And lastly, those helper scripts I mentioned, we should have those on hand. So just pull up the web page, which again, will be linked in the description. And now we're ready to actually get to work. Once we have our ISO downloaded, we're gonna move it over to Etcher and then select the ISO in this first section here. The target here is gonna be the SD card or thumb drive that I mentioned. For this video, I am using a SanDisk Cruiser Glide Media. So just select whatever you're using and then we're gonna hit flash. Now this should usually be pretty quick. You may have to wait a couple minutes and then at the very end, there's gonna be a verification step. So just go through that. And now we just take that and we plug it into the hardware that we're using here. This will get us into the Proxmox VE installation, which is honestly very straightforward. So just fill out the information required in the setup wizard and then on to the next step. Once you finish this installation, Proxmox will load and then it's gonna show us the URL where the admin UI is gonna be loaded from. It's gonna prompt you for the username and password that you set up during the install process. So I'm gonna go ahead and just log in with mine. And now we're officially in the Proxmox UI. The basis of it is really simple, honestly. You have a root node, which is PVE, and then you have a bunch of resources below. We're not gonna to dive too deep into all this, but essentially, what we can do now is go and create new VMs or containers. These are gonna be things like Docker containers, but they are specific to Proxmox. And again, from here, we could set everything up manually, but we're gonna go back to the helper scripts. You can kind of think of the helper scripts as the secret sauce of Proxmox. They make setting up things like a VM, a container, basically any service you can think of as easy as literally just copying and pasting a line into your Proxmox terminal. Right now we need the Proxmox VE post install script. So let's go find that. And then, like I said, it's a copy paste. So we do that. And then in this case, we'll get a series of prompts. So let's go through those together. We want to use the correct sources. In my case, I don't need access to enterprise. So I'm just gonna disable all enterprise repositories. We want to leverage a no subscription repository because that's going to get us essentially everything that's free. The Ceph packages have some enterprise repositories, so we'll say no to this one. I don't need any tester beta features, so I'm going to say yes here. I definitely want to disable the subscription nag, which is basically just a pop-up if you have not purchased enterprise. This next one is to support the dev team, which I highly recommend you do if you can. Like I said, lots of cool open source stuff happening here, so we want to make sure that people keep doing that. 
In this case, we're touching just a single node cluster, so I don't need to enable high availability. I definitely wanna make sure that we are using the most up-to-date version of Proxmox VE. And then again, because I'm only using a single node, we don't need to run the script multiple times here. We are now officially set up with our Proxmox VE, and so we get to play around with the more fun helper scripts, not just post install. This could be for Docker, it could be for Home Assistant. Honestly, if you can think of it, it probably exists in there. Today, I wanna start with an LXE container for Ubuntu. Like I said earlier, once again, it's just a copy paste, it's so nice. So we just need to copy this line here and then paste it into our root terminal and there you go. I'm just gonna use default settings, but if you wanna dig into advanced settings, go ahead. Usually these scripts run really quickly, but because this one needs to reach out to an Ubuntu ISO, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but bear with me here. So we're setting up the container, customizing the container, and now we can see that it shows up under our head node. Okay, script completes and Ubuntu has been successfully installed. If we go over to that container, we'll see full resource info and then stuff like network and CPU usage. And then we get a full console into this container. So let's click on that console and we can see we have full access. This is the power of virtualization and why I love Proxmox. From here, we can do pretty much anything that we could do on a regular plain old Ubuntu machine. And so let's do that. Now that we have our new Ubuntu container, let's set up SSH. First thing we wanna do is set a new password and then enable root login via SSH. And to do that, we're gonna nano etc ssh sshd config. We're gonna look for permit root login and uncomment and get rid of prohibit password. And then we'll just replace this with yes. Normally you should set up a new user so that you're not SSHing as root, but because we're moving quick for a demo, I'm gonna be SSHing as root, so just ignore that. Now we just need to restart SSH and go back to our root node and SSH to the IP address that we found earlier, 192.168.0.149. And we're in. So we're good to go with SSH on our new Ubuntu container, which brings us to the next section of today's video, Twingate. In case you forgot, you are on the Twingate YouTube channel. I work for Twingate, but what actually is it? Twingate offers a zero trust network access solution, which means that I will be able to access my shiny new Ubuntu container, even if I'm away from my home lab without compromising on security. And to do this, we don't need to recut our network and we also don't need to set any inbound rules or open any inbound ports. If you're brand new to Twingate, just head over to twingate.com and you can sign up for free. Just follow the prompts once you're in and then we're gonna create a remote network. This is essentially just a logical separation of resources. So today I'm gonna call ours Proxmox Test. We're gonna need this network URL, so keep track of it for when we need to bring it back later. You can set up Twingate to act more like a gateway if you wanna have a single address, access multiple resources. But today we're just gonna select a single IP address. It's a server and the IP address is 192.168.0.149. And here we're essentially just telling Twingate, I have an Ubuntu machine at this address. Then we'll click create resource. The second step of getting Twingate up and running is installing a Twingate connector. Click manual and then scroll down to the second step here to hit generate tokens. This is gonna to generate two tokens. One is an access token and the other is a refresh token. These tokens are gonna give your connector access and then also make sure that it's authenticated. Now we get to head back to the helper scripts once again. My coworker, Andrew, who is just the best and is constantly building really, really cool stuff, created a Twingate connector deployment helper script. So we're just gonna find that in the helper script ecosystem and take that URL, paste it right into our root node and hit enter. The script is gonna ask for the access token that we generated earlier and then the refresh token, same process as before. And then lastly, we need our network name. So in this case, Proxmox test. We know that everything worked because here on the screen, we can see it changed to a green check mark. 
our network is now connected and we're ready to continue on. Now you'll need the Twingate client. I'm not gonna demo this because I already have it on my machine. I am a Twingate employee, like I said, so it'd be kind of weird if I didn't have it ready to go. But if you just go to twingate.com slash download, you'll see the latest versions for all of the clients for various operating systems. Okay, back to connectors real quick. If you wanna double check that it's working, you can go to connectors here and then click on the green connector and we can see it's all good. Okay, now we are officially ready to put all of this together and test it out. So let's see if I can remotely SSH into my new Ubuntu container. If it wasn't clear, I'm filming this at home. So I am actually on the same network that I wanna be remotely connecting to. So I gotta break that so that I can actually demo it, which just means that I need to use my phone hotspot. I'm now on my phone hotspot and I've launched the Twingate client already. So I just need to enter the network I'm using. So our old friend, Proxmox test. I'm skipping the authentication steps just for the sake of not boring you all, but I'm fully connected to our Twingate network. So let's see if it's all working and I can actually SSH into my Ubuntu LXC. We'll do the same exact command we did before. Say yes. It'll prompt us for our password. And I'm in. You can see it's the community script-based LXC running Ubuntu version 24.04. And then we've got our same friendly old IP address that we've been referencing throughout. And what's so cool is that this whole process of getting Proxmox spun up and then Twingate set up means that we can now deploy any new service to our Proxmox virtual environment. So that could be Home Assistant or Jellyfin or Piehole. There's honestly, so many options to play around with and we get to repeat the same process of an incredibly easy install. It means an efficient use of the hardware that we have and of any new hardware that we're bringing into our home lab. And then if I'm ever away from home or I wanna do something like turn my lamps off when I'm traveling, cause I forgot to, I can now do that securely and remotely through Twingate. If you don't see a service that you want in the Proxmox helper script ecosystem, you can write it yourself. Go for it, make a contribution. That just about wraps up our video. Let me know what you thought about it. This is my first time doing this type of video for Twingate. You may have seen me on our LinkedIn doing like more official product demo type things, but this is a little more lax, a little more tied to home lab. So I wanna know, was it useful? Did you like it? Do you hate virtualization? Do you love Proxmox? I want to hear it all. So leave a comment. Oh, and let me know if there are any projects that you want to see from the Twingate team in the near future, because we have a lot of really cool stuff that we are working on and there's a chance we're already working on it. But if we aren't, we'll see if we can get it prioritized. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.